Where are you, man? Are you still alive? Did you quit with YouTube? Yeah, I'm still here and uh, this is where I've been hiding. Welcome to Zebra Workshop where I'm uh, printing and assembling zebra holders, coating dry plates, making drying racks and many other mostly dry plate related stuff. I'm very very busy all the time as you can imagine because there's lots of handwork and uh, precision work involved. I'm currently working on some 4x5 holders and uh, dark slides which are gluing right here. But yeah, I'm happy to say that uh, this became my full-time job now, which I'm really happy about. I really love doing this, but I really love filming and making videos for you guys as well. And uh, since this uh, channel passed 4,000 subscribers recently, I thought to myself, hey man, it's time to stop kidding and uh, let's make a new video for these guys. So yeah, without further ado, let's go! A few days ago I was shocked by a zebra dry plate positive that was shared by one of my customers. Mostly because he was stating that it was a so-called uh, accidental positive and that he had no intentions of uh, making a positive whatsoever. I contacted him, we started talking and uh, he told me how he made the exposure and started developing the negative like usual. But after about uh, two minutes he had to go outside of the darkroom to fetch something and uh, he was outside, turned the lights on and uh, after about two minutes when he was returning uh, back in the darkroom he realized that he didn't close his doors, his darkroom doors properly. So there was a tiny crack by the door and the light was coming in for full two minutes. But he said, hey, I have nothing to lose. I will uh, continue developing to see what, what I end up with. And uh, after he finished the development and after he turned the lights back on, he was completely shocked, just like we were, because the thing he got was a real direct positive. Even though I'm deep into the emotion making, dry plates and so on, I simply couldn't imagine a direct dry plate positive without the use of reversal process. Where the image is first processed to negative, negative is then bleached, re-exposed and redeveloped to get a positive image. I've actually made a full video tutorial about this process, which is linked up here. I've heard about solarization before because of the fantastic images produced by uh, Darkroom Rule Breaker Man Ray. But to be honest, I've never heard about Sabatier effect. So this is where my research and my learning begins. Guys, please let me know down in the comment section below if you've ever heard or uh, used this Sabatier effect before. After reading through different articles, blogs, forums and so on, I came to realize that even though many people think that solarization and Sabatier effect are one and the same thing, that's not true. Solarization as we know it is an effect of tone reversal achieved by extreme overexposure of photographic material while still in the camera. On the other hand, Sabatier effect, also called pseudo-solarization, that was first described and mentioned in articles dating way back in 1860s, is a phenomenon where a negative image is reversed in tone by a very short re-exposure of the partially developed negative. Until today this phenomenon was actually rediscovered many times due to the darkroom accidents such as the one that happened to Man Ray where one of his uh, colleague artists uh, accidentally turned the lights on while Man Ray was developing the negatives. A few days ago we were a witness of another rediscovery when uh, Philip accidentally re-exposed zebra dry plates during development. When I was reading through different instructions on how to achieve Sabatier effect I thought to myself wait a sec, zebra dry plates are actually perfect for this job because they are slow and they are coated with a rather thick layer of emulsion compared to commercially available film. And as you can imagine I have quite a few plates in the fridge so let's stop talking and start experimenting. Before the fun begins I think it would be very useful to cover certain principles that will guide you through the use of this technique. It all starts inside the camera with a proper negative exposure. The instructions I've read mostly recommend a slight underexposure from one to a few stops because you want to avoid the overexposed areas as much as possible. I will try to figure out what works the best for zebra dry plates. Since I will be running many tests I would like to keep as many things as constant as possible. This means I will be shooting on an overcast day where the light conditions are staying more or less the same. Uh, we are actually already slowly entering winter time, you can see the autumn colors there and like I said there is very little light coming through the clouds right now. 
So the ideal exposure time I metered uh, is uh, one second at uh, f5.6. I metered that for ISO 1 because, like I said, very little UV light. So yeah, this will be my reference point throughout the whole uh, testing shoot today. After the exposure, it's time to develop the image, but this will not be a normal developing procedure. We can even say it's going to be far from normal. Because during development, I will turn on the lights for a brief moment. By doing that, I will re-expose the negative for the second time. But we will get to that a bit later on. Let's first take a look at the equipment and the chemicals I'm going to be using. For all of my tests, I will be developing in Kodak HC110 Dilution B at 21 degrees Celsius. Washing in normal tap water. Fixing in a rapid fixer and uh, final wash in uh, water as well. As you can see I will be developing in a white developing tray which is sitting right under the enlarger because two minutes into development when the shadows will slowly start to appear I will expose my negative for the second time. Yeah, color of the tray plays a big role as well especially when it comes to contrast control. I went into more details about that in my blog which is linked in the description below. The enlarger I'm using has a 150 watt bulb, it's set to full power because my aperture is uh, fully opened and the distance from the enlarger to the tray is 35 centimeters if anybody would like to repeat this process I will determine the exact flashing time I need later on in the process when I start making the test After a short flash with the enlarger I will keep on developing and stop at 3 minutes and 30 seconds which is 30% shorter developing time from what I usually use for Zbar dry plate negatives Developing has to be cut in order to prevent the positive from being either too dark or uh, too even in tones. In short, that would be it. I didn't want to overcomplicate things for this video, but if you'd like to learn more about the Sabatier effect, I warmly invite you to check out my blog where I also show you the science behind the technique by uh, using some very simple graphic illustrations. Now that we know how the process goes and uh, what things will stay constant, let's start running the tests. I think it's very important for you to pay close attention throughout this whole testing sequence as you will gain a much better understanding of how things work. Ok, let's first repeat the basics that remained constant throughout the whole process. I was shooting with Zebra ISO 2 glass dry plates on an overcast day between 12 and 2 pm. Ideal exposure time would be 1 second at f5.6 metered for ISO 1. I developed all the tests in uh, Kodak HC110 Dilution B at 21 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes and a half and 2 minutes into the exposure I uh, flashed the negative for a brief moment with this enlarger that has 150 watt bulb and it's lifted 35 centimeters from the base at full power. After making a few test shots I've decided that instead of uh, showing you the whole process I will rather just show you the final results and the settings I used because the things would simply repeat too many times but don't worry with my last final positive image I will walk you through the whole magical process so from making the exposure, development, re-exposure, further development all the way to the positive image. So yeah let's start! <laughs> It's more than obvious that the fun I'm having today by making all of these tests in order to show you and to walk you through this very interesting technique is definitely not cheap. I've uh, exposed 12 over 10 plates already. Fortunately most of them are successfully developed right here and I have some failed ones in the sink here because of some stupid exposure mistakes I did in the beginning. But anyway what I would like to address is that um, if you'd like to see me making more videos like this, where I make more thorough tests, I don't know, developing dry plates with different developers, or even making autochromes, which I would love to start doing again, all that costs a lot of money and uh, it's really time consuming, so I would warmly invite you to consider becoming my Patreon. Uh, by doing that you will support this channel and you will become a part of the community. You can find the link to the, to the Patreon in the description below. 
Or another thing you can do is uh, visit Zebra store and uh, purchase some of the Zebra products that I'm hand making myself. Basically I'm doing everything dry plate related from uh, Zebra dry plates, holders, racks and so on. So yeah, if you're gonna do that you'll be able to have some fun yourself as well, experiment, test and uh, enjoy the magic of dry plates. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say so let's get back to the testing now. With my first test I made an exposure two stops lower than metered which was one quarter of a second at f5.6. I developed for two minutes, flashed the negative only for 0.5 seconds and finished developing at three minutes and a half. There was no positive effect to be seen, just underexposed fog negative. For the second test I made an exposure three stops lower than metered at one eighth of a second at f5.6. I developed for 2 minutes, flashed for 1 second and finished developing at 3 minutes and a half. There was a faint positive but with extremely low contrast. That meant that the initial exposure had to be longer and flashing shorter. For the third test I made an exposure at metered settings, so 1 second at f5.6. I developed for 2 minutes, flashed for 1 second and finished developing at 3 minutes and a half. I actually got a mix of a positive and solarization. I believe that meant that I should increase the flashing time to overpower the negative and get a better positive. So for my fourth test I made the exposure at metered settings again, so 1 second at f5.6. I developed for 2 minutes and flashed for 2 seconds this time. I finished developing at 3 minutes and a half. To my surprise I still had a solarization problem as the longer flashing just made the whole image darker and less contrasty. That meant I had to tweak my exposure time which was obviously too long. Therefore with my fifth test I made an exposure two stops below metered which was one quarter of a second at f5.6. I developed for two minutes, flashing again for two seconds and finished developing at three minutes and a half. I got a positive which meant I made the right move with underexposing a bit but the positive was still a bit too dark and contrasty so I tweaked the flashing time with my next test. Where I once again made the exposure at one quarter of a second at f5.6. I developed for two minutes and flashed for one and a half second this time and finished developing at three minutes and a half. Positive turned up much brighter and with better contrast but I was still missing details in the highlights so with my next test I extended my initial exposure for a bit. So for the seventh test I made an exposure one stop lower than metered which was one half of a second at f5.6. I developed for two minutes, flashed for one and a half second and finished developing at three minutes and a half. This positive already confirmed that this could be a very useful and legit technique for making dry plate positives. I thought though that with slight changes I could achieve an even better, more contrasty and tiny bit darker result. So this brings us to our final test where I will take you along with my camera like promised. So let's go! So for my final test I'm gonna make the exposure at uh, roughly f6.7 and I'm gonna expose for one half of a second. The ideal exposure time throughout the, the whole uh, testing period today would be one second at uh, f5.6. I metered that for uh, ISO 1. Plates are rated at uh, ISO 2 but because of extreme overcast today let me show you yeah you can see it's there is pretty much no direct sun coming through and we are already uh, entering uh, winter time as well so there is not much UV light coming through Anyway, I metered at ISO 1 and for my final test I'm gonna uh, underexpose basically for one stop and a half. So I'm gonna make the exposure now and uh, I'm already looking forward to, to the perfect positive, hopefully. Here I am in the dark room where I will show you how to develop and flash the image. I already took the plate out of the zebra holder, so let's slide it into the developing tray that is sitting right under the enlarger. After about 30 seconds or so, highlights will start to appear, meaning you are on the right track. Just past 1 minute mark, also shadows start to come in, but not too much. I can also slowly start to see the outlines of the treehouse, so at 2 minute mark it's time to flash the negative for 1 second. After flashing, plate will slowly start to darken. If it darkens too quick, you flashed it too much and if it's darkening too slow, you need to give it more exposure. 
By the end of development, the plate became almost completely dark to the point where you can faintly see the positive image. Maybe you can see better now if this guy is gonna focus, but uh, yeah, you can see the birdhouse with some leaves and some branches. So yeah, this is looking pretty promising. After flashing, it's time to fix the plate and uh, towards the end of fixing, you will slowly start to see the positive image in all of its glory. Now I will uh, transfer the plate in my final wash and uh, I will turn the lights on and show you the magic. There you go, plate in the final wash. I will uh, turn on the main lights of my dark room right here and uh, now let's see what we got. Oh yeah. I'm, I don't I have, I have no words actually, I'm speechless. Because the thing that we have here is, I would say, nearly perfect positive plate. I don't know how well you will be able to see on the camera, but uh, I will uh, scan the plate later on to show you the, the, the image in all of its glory. But yeah, I mean, when I started uh, testing this process and when I first heard about it, I simply couldn't, I was, I was already stunned, I couldn't believe that this thing could work. But now after all this testing and uh, now that I hold an actual positive plate in my hand, after a simple one second exposure during development is simply out of this world really. I have no words so <laughs> I will uh, leave this plate to, to wash further and to wash completely. I will uh, let it dry and uh, like I said I will uh, scan it and uh, show you the final result. See you guys! There you go, this is my final 8th test which was made at one half of a second at f6.5 which is one and a half stops below my ideal exposure time. I developed it for 2 minutes, then I flashed it for 1 second and finished developing at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Besides the white specks that are present on the positive that were caused by the particles floating around in my developer when I flashed the image for the second time, I'm uh, very happy with the result. Negative got pretty much completely reversed. Uh, there is only a tiny little bit of solarization in the top left hand side where there is some sky in the background, but yeah, I'm really happy with the overall contrast and the tonality of the positive. Boom! There you have a perfect direct glass dry plate positive using a standard developing procedure, taking advantage of the Sabatier effect. It's actually a perfect ratio between slight underexposure, developing time in the exhausted developer and the amount of flashing. There you go guys, I didn't upload any videos for the last few weeks but hopefully I repaid you just a tiny little bit with this one. I also have to point out that a few days ago this channel passed 4000 subscribers which is truly 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 insane. When I started with this channel I would have never thought that there would be so many of you who are interested in the old ways and I really thank each and every one for, for your subscription, for your views for your support. With this one I really enjoyed experimenting, I learned a lot along the way and uh, I also ended up with a very pleasing and rewarding result. If you enjoyed as well and if you learned something new please don't forget to smash that like button and if you have any questions, recommendations uh, or whatever please leave it in the comment section below. I'm always happy to read through it, to answer your questions and uh, for others to see the answers as well. It often just helps to spread the knowledge. That's it. I wish you all the best and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye!